My friend, the road to GMRSville is a long, windy, twisty, confusing road. It's really more like a dirt path than a road. And if you're like me, when you're first starting down that road to GMRSville, it's like you're walking barefoot on that dirt path. Well, don't worry. I'm here to steer you right down that road. Think of me as your shoes for that dirt path. Comfortable, protective, helpful. Might be ugly to look at, might be a little smelly, but you're glad you have them. Over the last few months, I've done several reviews of several GMRS radios, pretty much all of the new GMRS handheld radios that have come to market in the last few months, I've reviewed them. And in every one of those videos, every single one, somebody always posts a comment asking, well, which is better, this one or that one? Should I buy this or should I buy that? What if I wanna do this and do that? Can this radio do that? So today I wanna to go over all of the handheld radios that I've reviewed over the last several months since last year and compare them, go over the features that matter to me that I think will matter to you because all of these radios have pages of descriptions of stuff, but there are features that I think are important. So I'm gonna go over all of those features of all of these radios and kind of compare them so that if you're in the market for a new GMRS radio, you'll have more information to better make an informed better better informed choice you'll know what to buy now this is all my opinion based on using all i've used all of these radios usually off-road but around the house talking to repeaters and sitting on the couch so i actually know what i'm talking about but i'll focus on what's important to me and what i think is important to the average gmrs user you may not be the average gmrs user you may have special needs and if that's the case what i have to say may not matter to you take away what you want from this review this comparison learn what you can ignore what you don't care about. As with all of my videos, I'm gonna to try to go through this as quickly as I can and keep this video as short as possible. Because I know that you like to tell people that you've got a lot of important stuff to do. I respect that, I get it. I don't wanna waste your time. I would never do that. All these radios that I'm gonna go over I will put links to in the description, uh, the information section of this video below. You can check them out. You can look up their specs. You can see their current pricing. All the prices that I mentioned today are as of April, 2021. Those could change tomorrow. So if you're watching this video three years from the day that I'm posting it and the price has gone up by $5, you don't need to leave a comment to tell us that the price has gone up. That's normal, that happens. I'll also put links usually right up at about here to the full reviews of each of these radios that I've done. If you wanna watch those videos, you just click there as you see them appear. Don't click there until you see it appear. All of these radios that I'll be talking about are GMRS FCC Part 95 E compliant radios. That means you must have a GMRS license to transmit using one of these radios. If you don't already have your GMRS license, I will put a link down below to a step-by-step -step guide of how to get your GMRS license. There's no test. The test is figuring out how to get around the stupid FCC website because it's so poorly designed. It's a pain in the bitch to find your way around just to give them your money to buy a GMRS license. A lot of people don't have their GMRS license just because it's too damn complicated to figure out the stupid website. GMRS license is good for 10 years. Currently, as of today, cost $70 for 10 years. They will be soon, very soon. I've read in as soon as the next few weeks, they will be lowering that price to $35. Paying for that GMRS license allows you to use our free airwaves. I'm gonna go over each radio. I'm gonna go in order of price, starting lowest to highest. That's because the price, for most people, the most important factor in buying a radio is the price. So I'm gonna start at the cheapest. If all you care about is what's the cheapest radio that will work and get the job done, that way you can just watch the first minute of or so of the video and you can be on your way because those important things you've got to do, watching those videos of babies tasting lemons for the first time or other similar engaging, important stuff. Or you can stick around and see what you're missing out on by not paying a couple of more dollars to get a better radio. Choice is yours, I don't care either way. All of the radios that I'm gonna show you, except for two, I'm gonna show you two that aren't so good, but all of the other ones, except for those two, are good radios. You can talk the same distance on all of them, give or take a few hundred yards. So there's no advantage to buying $30 radio compared to a $200 radio as far as distance. If you get a GMRS radio that's full power, five or five and a half watts, it's gonna talk the same distance, give or take 
you know, no normal human being would be able to tell the difference. Now, if you put them in a laboratory and hook up some fancy meters to them, you might see that one technically in a book on paper could talk a little farther than the other. But in the real world, they all get about one to slightly more than one mile in my poor conditions test that I do on all the radios I review. And they can all hit a repeater 69 miles away from my couch. So they're all decent radios as far as distance. So really when you're making your choice on what to buy, it's gonna boil down to features, rugged, ruggedness, rugged ability, how easy it is to use, and features, features, features. All of these radios are programmable either by the keypad, on the radio itself, or you can use their software. They all have their own software. Only one of them is compatible with Chirp. Chirp is a software that runs on Windows or Mac and Linux and everything else that makes it really easy to program. All the other ones only work with their own manufacturer's software and those are all Windows only. But all of the radios are pretty much easy enough to program if you invest a few minutes in reading through the manual, you don't really need the software, but if you require the software, if you don't know how to read a manual, bear in mind that most of them are Windows only. So as long as you have a Windows computer, you'll do just fine. Now, no list of radios would be complete without discussing the UV-5R, the Baofeng UV-5R. The UV-5R is not a GMRS radio. It does transmit on GMRS frequencies, but it's not legal. And it's a pain in the bitch to get it to work with GMRS. It's So this is not, if you're looking to buy a GMRS radio, scratch the UV-5R off your list. Not a GMRS radio. We're not even gonna talk about it. We're gonna put this one where it belongs. And that says decoration in a YouTube set. Next on the list is the UV5X, Baofeng UV5X. Now I don't have one here to show you because I did a review of one just a few weeks ago. Don't buy a UV5X. That's a, it's the GMRS legal version of the UV5R. It's got a lot of issues. It's a piece of sh If you wanna watch that review, it's right there. It's very inexpensive, but it's, don't, don't get it. I cannot recommend you purchasing that radio. The next radio, on the list is the Radio Oddity, Ray Oddity, Radio Di, Ray, Ray Oddity, GM30. The GM30 costs $40. It has what us GMRS wireheads call an SOC or radio on a chip circuitry. It's very inexpensive. The whole radio is basically on one chip. Low cost, low price, but it's not super sensitive. The squelch is not the best, meaning the squelch does not work very well. It has 250 programmable channels. I'll show you on all these radios. The screen size. Screen size is approximately that big by that big. It's kind of hard for me to read it at this angle and I'll compare all of them. Screen size matters. It comes with a 1500 milliamp hour battery. Great thing about the GM30 is that it has USB-C charging. So you can plug any USB-C plug directly into that to charge it up. None of these other radios offer that. It's a pretty good little uh, feature if you've got a lot of USB-C chargers laying around the house. It has no IP rating, uh, so no Basically, it's not waterproof or moisture proof or dust proof in any way, so it's not very rugged. Ray Oddity GM30, $40. I will put an affiliate link below. Next on the list is the BTEC or Baofeng Tech GMRS V1. It costs $55. It has a screen that is that big by that big. The GMRS V1 is also an SOC system on a chip or entire radio on a chip. So the squelch is not the greatest. Sensitivity is not the greatest. This radio has is able to monitor two frequencies at once. You get an upper line and a lower line. You can switch between the two. You can transmit on one while you're talking on the other one. That can be helpful if you have a need or a reason to talk to two different people, for example, on two different frequencies. It can be helpful. 
Comes with an 1800 milliamp hour battery. Can pro Did I mention the reality? You can program 250 channels for scanning through. I don't know if I mentioned that. The GMRS V1, you can program 98 channels to scan through. So those channels are used for like NOAA channels or just UHF or VF VHF channels. You can't talk on them, but you can scan through them and monitor ham radio channels, uh, some police and fire emergency that's uh, analog. You can listen to that sort of thing. Now, the website, when I looked at it today, says that it transmits at a maximum of two watts. Now mine, when I tested it, the website said, and the box said it was five watts, but I guess when they've changed that. So if you buy one now, it's only two watts. Now that's not gonna make a huge difference in the distance. It will make some difference, but it's not like five watts transmits two times or th two and a half times farther than five watts. You probably won't notice that difference in most cases. Actually, it will probably make the battery last longer transmitting at only two watts instead of five watts. But if extreme distance, every drop of distance that you can get is, is important to you, this may not be the best choice. This is the only radio that does not output at least five watts, at least according to the specs today. I don't know why they changed it. If you know why they changed it, leave a comment below. We now go to the Wuxin Ocean KG805G. KG805 is normally $89 on sale now for $79. Affiliate links below. KG805G has su super heterodyne circuitry. It does not use the cheap and expensive radio on a chip. It's more of a, the antenna heads call a real radio circuit. Uh, what that means is that it's got a better squelch, a squelch that actually works. It receives, uh, the, the receiving is more sensitive and they say that it transmits better. I don't know what that means. To my ear, the sound is better. So it's slightly better quality. KG805G comes with a 1700 milliamp hour battery. It has an IP rating of IP55, so it's moisture proof and dust proof. Would still want to be careful with it in the rain, but uh, it is, so it's got some protection, unlike the less expensive radios. KG805G stores 128 channels for scanning through, same as the other radios, VHF, UHF, NOAA channels that you can scan through. Nice feature about the KG805G that you can't do on some of the cheaper radios is that you can store multiple repeaters on the same frequency with different repeater tones. If you don't use repeaters, that doesn't matter. If you ever use repeaters in different areas, for example, I have several repeaters programmed at home that I use. I go four by fouring a hundred miles away and there's a bunch of other repeaters up there that are on the same channels, but they use different tones. I can store those other repeaters in a different channel and just switch right to them and start using them. The lesser expensive radios cannot do that. You would have to go in and program the different tones on that channel for that repeater uh, when you get in range with it. And that's a real pain in the bitch. So that's a great feature that uh, all of these more expensive radios can do. The KG805G, $89 on sale now, $79. Affiliate link below. Oh, oh. Did I measure? Did I show you how big that one is? Size does matter. I forget these things. That's almost two inches by about one inch. The next radio on the list, ladies and gentlemen, is the Wuxin Ocean KG905G in all of its glory. KG905G costs $110 affiliate link below, is very similar in many ways to the uh, to the KG805G. Same basic look. The screen is a little bit larger. As you can see, the KG905G also has that super heterodyne circuitry, so it's more sensitive uh, squelch that actually does work. KG905G is able to store 256 channels for scanning through UHF, VHF, NOAA, that sort of thing. KG905G has a 2600 milliamp hour battery. So it's quite a step up from the KG805G. So that battery is gonna last a lot longer. KG905G has an IP66 rating. So it's nearly waterproof. You don't wanna drop it in the lake, but uh, it's much more water resistant, measurably more water resistant than the KG805G. And you're also able to store 
multiple repeaters that are on the same frequency or same channel, but use different tones. As I mentioned with the KG805G, the KG905G, $110. Affiliate link below. Okay, this brings us to the Wuxin Ocean KGUV9G, a feature packed, feature packed radio. Feature packed may or may not be a good thing, depending on what you want to do with your radio. So it does have a larger screen, as you can see, larger than the 805 and 905G radios. You can see them. The UV9G cost $169, affiliate link below. And this radio is designed for and marketed toward preppers and emergency use, you know, that shit hit the fan time. So may not be the best choice if you want something to go play paintball with, cost a bit more, but it's got a lot more features than the all of the lesser expensive radios. More bells and whistles means you can do a lot more, but there's a lot more to learn. It can be more complicated. KG UV9G transmits up to five and a half watts. All the other radios were five watts maximum. This one, they've turned the knob from five. They turned it to five and a half. It's not gonna make a huge difference uh, distance wise, but if you need every drop of distance possible, five and a half is better than five. This radio also has the super heterodyne technology. So it's got a squelch that works. KG UV9G has dual watch. Some of the other radios, I think I mentioned it. I hope I did. I have notes. I don't even know if I'm reading them. Dual watch, which means you can scan two frequencies at the same time. So it's it's like having two radios in one. The KG905G, for example, and the GMRS V1 have dual push to talk buttons. So you can talk on channel A or channel B, whichever one you're monitoring. And you can also scan two separate sets of channels at the same time. Like the other ocean radios, you can store multiple repeaters on the same frequency with different tones. The KGUV9G stores up to 999 channels. That's way more than the other radios. It's way more than all these other radios combined. It comes with a 3200 milliamp hour battery that is by quite a quite a bit larger than any of the other batteries. So in theory, that means the battery will last longer. It also has a lot of options, power saving options that will make the battery last longer. So a bigger battery does not necessarily mean that it's gonna last longer than the other radios if it's not efficient. I'm not saying the other radios are not efficient. This radio has additional features, power saving features that will help you make the battery last longer if you take advantage of them. If you're pressing the button and talking all day, it's gonna suck down the battery just as fast, but that is a much larger battery than the other radios. KGUV9G is a seven band receiver, so it can scan through more frequencies than the other radios, including the AM air band. I do not believe any of the other radios are able to receive AM air band. The UV9G has an IP55 rating, so it's slightly less waterproof so I would say, I call that ruggedness, than say the KV, KG 905G. Although I have read that they've got an IP66 or IP67 version coming. The KG UV 9G comes pre-programmed with almost 900, like 876 channels that are pre-programmed of federal agencies, state agencies, the IRS, just all sorts of, all sorts of government agencies state prisons, everything pre-programmed in there. All these other radios, you would have to find those frequencies yourself and program them in there yourself. And this one holds a whole lot more of those channels. So if that's something you wanna do, scanning and listening to as much as you can, using this more like a scanner, this radio is better suited to do that. It doesn't scan super fast. It's not as fast at scanning as a dedicated scanner, but you can have it scan through two groups at once. So that makes it scan twice as fast through all of the channels. So which one is the best? Which one should I buy? Which one should you buy? Well, my friend, only you can answer that. If you want the cheapest and all you care about is the least amount of dollars for GMRS radio, the GM30 from Ray Oddity, Radio Oddity is your choice. 30 bucks, affiliate link below. Just don't drop it in the water. If you want something slightly better, not a whole lot better, but slightly better, but cost a few dollars more. The 
BTEC GMRS V1 is one of our favorites. We carry one of these in the Jeep at all times. If you want to jump up to the higher level, better circuitry, more rugged, do a little bit more, use repeaters more, store more repeater channels, then either the KG805G or KG905G would be the radios for you. But if you want a full shit hit the fan, emergency scanner, bells and whistles, does it all type radio, then you're going to want the UV9G. Another question that a lot of people ask, almost always, is what radio do I use? And my response to that is, why would you give a flying refrigerator about what I use? But I'll tell you what I use. In my Jeep, my current favorite radio is my KG905G. I like it because it stores the multiple repeaters on the same frequency with different tones that some of the other radios don't do. It's very simple to use. It has the simple interface. I like simple because I'm a simple man. Oh, and it's rugged. So when I'm out off-roading, if it's raining, although it's rare you'd find me off-roading in the rain, I don't like the rain. If I needed, if I wanted to use it in the rain, I could. I don't have to worry about dust. Dust is usually a big issue. KG905. I also keep a GMRS V1 in the wife's Jeep. Simple to use, but not as repeater friendly. Can't store the multiple repeaters and so on, but relatively simple interface. I also have the KG805 as a backup. Not quite as rugged as the 905, but still simple to use, easy interface. For me, that's what's important when I'm running up and down the trail. I don't want to have to have a whole bunch of buttons to figure out what's going on. I don't need all the features of the, of the UV9G. I need simplicity in my life. But I keep it home for emergency shit hit the fan, scanning, knowing what's going on. That's why I use the UV9G for. All right, so that's my opinion on these radios. If you have a specific question about any of these radios, leave a comment. I will do my best to answer it. If I don't answer it, somebody else will. They'll probably get it wrong because you can never trust what people post on YouTube as comments. Dickhead comments, stupid comments will be pinned to the top for everybody to marvel at. If I missed anything or if I got anything wrong, leave a comment, let me know. I'll make a correction if I need to. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trip.